Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the Minis Forum MSS1 Max, all £2,000 worth of it. We've looked at mini PCs before but this video features what is one of the most capable small systems yet. It doesn't really fit into the typical price range I like to focus on but when I learnt that this contains AMD's top tier Radeon 8060S iGPU, well I had to try it out. I've been an integrated graphics enthusiast for years ever since I first benchmarked Crysis and Far Cry 3 on my A43300 over a decade ago. Since then we've played many games using various onboard solutions with varied success of course. I've seen a handful of reviews of the MSS1 Max already with a focus on AI stuff and I'd recommend watching something else if you want to know about that because here we're all about gaming. Inside this aluminium chassis is a 16 core 32 thread Ryzen AI Max plus 395, 128 gigs of 8000 megahertz LPDDR5X, a 2TB M.2 SSD and of course the 8060S graphics. It's running Windows 11 but I'm might have to turn this into a little steam machine at some point, it would look great sat next to a TV, especially as it has an internal power supply, no external brick here. Around the outside we have plenty of ports including HDMI 2.1, USB 2, USB 3.2 Gen 2, USB 4, USB 4 V2 with transfer speeds of 80 gigabits per second and dual 10 gigabit Ethernet. What a little beast. For the following tests, I enabled the system's performance mode from within the BIOS, which increases the TDP and, of course, noise levels. That said, I did update the BIOS to the latest version, as provided by Minisforum, which is also available on the site, and this made things a little quieter, at least when idling. It sounded a little quieter when gaming as well. There are a few power modes to choose from within the BIOS, all of which have different power and fan speed settings. I also set the dedicated VRAM for the integrated graphics to 16 gigabytes. We have 128 gigs total memory, so we could have spared a bit more, but I didn't feel it necessary, especially as we're testing at 1080p today. Now this can also be done from within the AMD driver software, which I didn't know. This little machine also has a PCI Express slot, but it's not officially supported, so um, don't buy this with the hopes of adding a tiny discrete graphics card to it. I'll have to mess around with it and see uh, what I can get to work and whether or not we can get things running with uh, Linux, but that's a story for another day. So what can the 8060S do in 2025? Well, why don't we find out? Okay, so I had no idea what to expect. There aren't many 8060S benchmarks. Systems that use these graphics often focus on CPU intensive stuff, but of course we're all about gaming here. I started off with Battlefield 5 and I thought, stupidly, why don't we just jump in with the high settings? Turned out this wasn't so stupid after all because we were getting 87 frames per second. What the bloody hell is going on here? I did not expect this sort of frame rate from an iGPU. Yeah, over 60 frames per second, not with low settings either, but with high settings. FSR enabled as well, but set to native, and we're getting over 80 frames per second. Not just that, but the percentile lows are really solid too, uh, 63 and 58. I mean, I'm sort of right in the middle of it here. Uh, there's a lot going on on screen. I'm sort of running around trying to wipe out a few enemies, and the performance is holding up pretty steady. This is set to performance mode of course, so we're looking at 130 watts in terms of power. I'm going to have to compare this to a discrete GPU, perhaps a 4060, and see how the two perform. Borderlands 4 up next, and I find myself using the low settings with pretty much all hardware that I test. I was expecting to have to enable some form of upscaling here, and I thought we'd be walking away uh, with a pretty pixelated mess on our hands. I tried to avoid upscaling at all unless it was native, just so you get a decent idea of what the 8060S is capable of without any... Uh, I won't say cheating, but you know, like without any assistance, so to speak. And here, uh, I mean, yeah, we're getting almost 60 frames per second. The average is, well, around 55 FPS, not without its faults. This is something I usually see in Borderlands 4 anyway. We get the odd stutter here and there. The 1% low was 42, and the 0.1% low was 15. Overall, though, considering we're not using a discrete GPU here, very impressive. Now, the 8060S, of course, isn't exclusive 
to the MSS1 Max. And the reason I wanted to test it, although this is part of an expensive system today, I'm hoping that we're going to start seeing it appear in, you know, maybe desktop CPUs further down the line. I think it's also part of laptops as well. Hopefully this paves the way for some true AAA um, graphics card less gaming systems in 2025 and beyond. It's like a glimpse at the future of graphics card less gaming, of integrated gaming solutions. Really impressive. And I know at the moment it's part of pretty expensive PCs and you may not be looking to buy one of these if you're just into gaming, but yeah, it's always fascinating to see what this sort of hardware can do. Given what we've just seen, I didn't expect to have any issue with Counter-Strike 2 and that was definitely the case. I set the game too high. Now by default MSAA will be enabled but I just decided to turn this off. We don't really need MSAA here, at least in my opinion. Sure it's going to sort out some of the jagged lines but in an online competitive shooter like this, the more frames the better. I can probably say that for Battlefield as well. If you want a higher frame rate then you could turn things down to low uh, but I wanted to push this thing a little bit. Now that I know it's pretty pretty capable. I thought why don't we turn the graphics settings up where we can and CS2 is a perfect example of that high settings running with over 250 frames per second. 264, a 1% low of 121 and a 0.1% low of 66. Feels pretty smooth overall too. Now of course this chip supports ray tracing and so we're going to be checking that out with Cyberpunk 2077 shortly. First of all though we have the standard settings no ray tracing enabled here this is the high preset i've also enabled the high crowds because the ai max 395 is perfectly capable of that it's a cpu intensive option but we don't have any worries with the cpu side of things here we also have the high textures enabled which is absolutely fine for the 8060s as well and without any upscaling we're seeing at least 60 frames per second 67 was the average now the first time i ran this it was a little bit more all over the place a little bit more jumpy some inconsistencies with the frame times but i updated to the latest bios as provided by minis forum which is also available on the site 1.03 i believe and this seemed to make things a little smoother at least in cyberpunk here it looks as though the gpu isn't being fully utilized at least without ray tracing on I do wonder why this is. Maybe it's the power limitation of the system, 130 watts here. I don't know, but I can't really complain. Uh, this plus 60 FPS performance uh, with no discrete GPU in our system. And the frame times weren't actually that bad on paper either. I think the 8000 megahertz uh, LPDDR5X is doing some pretty hefty lifting as well. The faster the RAM with integrated AMD solutions, the better. We'll move on to ray tracing now, of course, because I felt like I needed to test this just to see what sort of performance we could expect. Now, there will actually be moments uh, with the Ultra RT preset where we hit 60 frames per second uh, with FSR 3 set to quality mode. Overall, the average came back at 45, a 1% low of 30 and a 0.1% low of 27. So even though 60 FPS wasn't consistently doable with these settings, um, yeah, it felt pretty smooth overall. I think 40 FPS feels fine, especially if it were to be capped. I probably wouldn't recommend turning RT on, but it is doable with this chip. Next up, I tried Elden Ring, which of course is capped to 60 FPS. I think we can uncap it somehow, but I tend to leave it where it is. This ends up being more of a test of consistency as opposed to anything else. And with the high preset here, uh, the only things I turned off were depth of field and motion blur as a personal preference. Yeah, we had no trouble hitting the cap. 60 FPS was the average. The 1% low was 51 and the 0.1% low was 36. So perhaps the occasional minor dip or drop, but it held up pretty steady with the 8060X graphics here. Next up, I tested GTA 5. This is the enhanced version of the game, which supports all the fancy new ray tracing effects, including ray traced global illumination. And I had that enabled here alongside the very high RT preset. Didn't push to the maximum RT preset, uh, as we did see a few more dips and drops below 60, but with the very high RT preset here and FSR 3 set to native, we were seeing over 60 FPS no problem. 77 was the average, the 1% low was 61, and the 0.1% low was 54. I think switching to TAA instead of FSR 3 native is going to give you between 5 and 10 FPS more, but FSR 3 just looks better, and we have the performance headroom to enable that. 
For Kingdom Come Deliverance then, I went with the high preset, an SMAA2TX. This also has FSR options, but we will see a drop in frame rate when using it, and it will cause a few more dips and drops below that magic 60 FPS number here. Now with the high preset, an SMAA2TX, we were seeing 90 FPS overall. Unbelievable, really, for an integrated solution. The 1% low was 62, and the 0.1% low was 42 yeah pretty impressive um i cannot wait to see what happens with the future of integrated graphics i'd like to see desktop chips with more powerful igpus again it's hard to recommend uh, going out and buying one of these just for gaming but i think as a showcase this is a pretty impressive example of where we're heading in terms of onboard graphics solutions Marvel Rivals with 1080p in the high preset. Now I turned global illumination and reflection quality off. These seem to be the two most intensive settings or the two most demanding settings. I also had FSR 3 set to native here for 79 frames per second. A couple of dips and drops, 49 and 35 or the 1 and 0.1% lows respectively. But overall, it was a really solid gameplay experience. One of my favourites, and I'm sure one of many of you's favourites now, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, I decided to go with the ultra textures, and I stuck everything else on high with TAA on high. The geometry level of detail slider was set to max, and the grass level of detail slider was set to 2 out of 10. I thought about choosing the console equivalent settings that I've seen mentioned in a Digital Foundry video before, and then I thought, nah, you know what, we'll push everything to high. Textures are ultra because we have the VRAM headroom to do so here and in return we saw well over 60 fps in fact all of the figures including the percentile lows came back with over 60 so 82 as an average 66 as that one percent low and a 0.1 percent low of 61 the game looks fantastic here i was just holding up a train which didn't end well for me as you can imagine but performance held steady throughout the entirety of my benchmark gameplay run We'll finalise with what is shaping up to be one of my favourite games of 2025, The Outer Worlds 2. Now we played this the other day on a Radeon RX 570, a 4 gig GPU that's about 8 years old now, and performance was, well, we saw 30 FPS at native, certainly had some issues, but... I wasn't expecting much. Here with the 8060S, we're using the medium preset and TSR native for 65 frames per second. This is a new Unreal Engine 5 title running with over 60 FPS with respectable graphics options enabled. As you can see, the GPU is clocking upwards of 2800 megahertz. I think 2900 megahertz is the sort of ceiling for the clock speed here, um, running at less than 70 degrees too, and the system is consuming 130 watts of power during my testing. But I mean, there we go. Now, if you're looking to put together a gaming PC, there are plenty of GPU and CPU combinations that will cost you less money than this, of course. That is obvious. But in terms of integrated graphical performance here, it's really, really impressive. And I can't wait to see how this performs as a Steam machine, you know, with Linux. Uh, we'll mess around with a few uh, graphics card options. This isn't the last time you're going to see this machine on this channel here. I'm going to have a few videos, I think. We'll be doing a comparison with a discrete 4060, perhaps, at some point as well. I'll leave a link down below. It's a very expensive machine, but it's impressive in terms of its gaming capabilities considering the internal specifications. And it is beyond the price point of things we usually look at, but... As a huge fan of integrated graphics, it's always interesting to see or to check out the progression of such solutions. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, leave your thoughts down below and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.